So welcome back to the BOS podcast. It's been a while, Karvi kind of Singh, since we've done a podcast with a guest. Um, besides the Good Book series, right? Hanji. So looking forward to this one as well. Uh, so thank you so much, Pai Gurpreet Singh, for joining us uh, today on the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and uh, that's a Leeds accent, right? It is, yeah. Born and bred in Bradford, but now <laughs> live in Leeds. Because okay, yes. yeah, yeah. we were speaking about earlier that um, for some reason I kept thinking from Derby, but actually all the way yeah. up in Leeds, so we travel from London yeah. uh, to come all the way up to have this podcast and to do this podcast with you. So just to start off with, um, because hopefully you can see it on the camera or in the description. Um, today we're talking about saving Punjab. Anji. Why? And uh, I guess the first question is, you know, especially linked to the title, but why Punjab? Hmm. So, I mean, I think we can start off by saying the, the reason there's a link between me sitting on this seat here and basic stuff Sikhi sitting there is there's a, a deep link between Sikhi and Punjab. Anji. Uh, the founder of Sikhi, Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, was born in Punjab, whether that's Lenda or Charda Punjab now. Um, our history is based in Punjab. Um, when we talk about Punjab as a specific, if we look at uh, Gurbani, Gurbani has countless references to the, f the flora and the fauna, the plants and the animals, uh, many metaphors in Gurbani that come across that. If you want... If you didn't understand the kind of geographical area or what Punjab was, some of them wouldn't make sense to you. For example, um, some there's I think there's around 58 plant species, uh, trees in, in, in Gurbani mentioned. Um, and just to kind of give an example why it's important that we understand Punjab and Punjabi and the culture and the Sabiyajar and how that relates to Sikhi. So have you ever heard of a... Um, a, a name of the drakt, Neem. Anji. Yeah. Have you ever seen one in the UK? Not no. in the UK. So we, like, we would have heard of it from our parents because they say it's the, the kind of cure to everything, Neem of the drakt, mm. for acne, for everything. Um, and it's supposed to be quite bitter. Uh, and Gurbani gives the reference to, um, uh, there's a Shabd in Gurbani, Amrit Lele, Neem Sinjai. The Guru Sahib talks about the bitterness of the Neem plant. And if you irrigate it with Amrit, it doesn't become less bitter it just carries on doing it. it's his sabah equally guru sahib talks about amb he talks about this the mango tree we don't see mangoes here but guru sahib talks about the this bird called the kokil the coil and it's in love with this mango tree um guru sahib the kokil um it basically it, it's in tune with this amb and maharaj so we've never seen a coil and a coil has a specific way it kind of does a pokar maharaj says uh in urbani kai uh, Kali koil to kit guna kali. Apne pritam ke mein biru hon jali. Guru Sahib talks about that blackbird. So similarly, Guru Sahib talks about the drakt, the symbol drakt, very tall, you know, very wide. And he gives examples. So we, born in the diaspora, we'd never understand what the symbol drakt is. When mm. Asadivar Guru Sahib says, symbol ruk saraira, at the dhiraga, at the much. So this tall, and, and Guru Sahib even gives the example of this, the symbol drakt as a sarir and says that the sarir is very tall and it has, it might have these virtues, but just like the symbol direct, it looks like it should have, you know, the, the fruit that bears on it that it'll be used. But it says, Oye ji ave askar, uh, ne So that basically, the basically the the bird that comes to that tree with the ask that it's going to give me something, mm. it doesn't take any anything away. It says, fal fikke, fal bukke, kam mm. So that it, it when it, the fal that it gives, it's is without any ras. And Guru Sahib gives the example of that as the also the Sarir being uh, the same as well. So that is just some examples that Gurbani gives to the, the flora, but also the, the kind of the animals, you know, Guru Sahib talks about the Bagala, the Hans. Mm. And some of these animals we probably have never even come across in our life. Mm. So Punjab as, a, as, as the actual geographical area is really important for us to understand Sikhi. Mm. And kind of regardless of all that, the flora, the fauna, the, the language, Coming back to it, if we care about the Pant, mm. then 75% of our Pant currently resides in Punjab. Mm. So why Punjab? The answer is, if you care about Sikhi, you care about your Pant, then you should be caring about Punjab because that's where 75% of your calm is living at the moment. And just to kind of like look at the viewers that may be watching this uh, podcast in the future, uh, who are born and bred here in the West, like myself and other people, um, what is home then? Like, but te te technically, we could say that this is my home. Someone could say that, right? I'm born in the UK. Um, English is my first language. 
what is this is my home then how, how is Punjab our home is it our home absolutely mm. I mean you biologically you know ev- in terms of every aspect psychologically you know physically everything you are related to Punjab whether mm. you have moved from Punjab you cannot take Punjab at you I mean, mm. you know, the, in in the UK, there's health problems. You speak to elders when they go back to Punjab, they sort it sorts them out. They talk about this all the time about eczema. <laughs> when you get ex, here with eczema flares in India, yeah, all the car everything, red skin goes away. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's crazy when you think about it. There's so many things that you know. If you the, the actual land itself, the tarti, like it's it's linked to us deeply now. We say that we're born in England and, you know, this is home for us. Technically, this this is never going to be home for us. I mean, it might be, you know, the whole world is not world home for us. If we know Mara says, we, we're going to go home at some point. Yeah. This whole world is, uh, mm-hmm. So this whole world is, you know, Mara says, Ram ke ho, Ravan ke ho, ko bopar thir Nothing's sustainable. But in, in the actual, in, for Punjab for us, is more home than what we can call here. Why? Because it's our Maboli. It's our sabiachar, and it's very important to to be in touch with your sabiachar, your mobili, your culture, your roots, because your language stems from your culture, and they say your language determines your values, and your values determine your future. So if you take out your you know your language, your values, your culture, then it shapes and changes the way the future is. I'll give you an example: we're British-born, kind of first, second generation in the UK. Would you say your Punjabi is quite good? It's all right. Yeah. Not okay. as good as a Punjabi. No, not as good as yeah. a Punjabi. Similarly, yeah. mine's not brilliant. Could you tell me what the Punjabi word for risk is? Mm. Not top of my head, no. That's the generation that we've just lost the whole word, haven't we? Mm. And if I tell you the word, you've never heard of it. Mm. So I remember sitting on TV and I was thinking, I was talking about pesticides and um the risk of pesticides. And I kept saying risk. And I sat there thinking, risk's not a Punjabi word. <laughs> and when I looked at it, I kept saying, I think, khatra. But khatra is actually danger. Hmm. So um, it's actually jokum. Okay. Jokum is the word for risk in Punjabi. But we've never heard that. Anji. And it just shows that you being away from your language, from your tarti, from home, as I'd call it home, it, it changes, it's going to change the way we see things. Mm-hmm. I mean, our, our uh, growing up, just talking culturally, you know, you, you were ill, you didn't have to go to the doctors and get a prescription. Haldi was the cure for everything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Haldi, Adrik, and all these things. But how, how many of us guys will remember that in the future? How many of you guys that go to, you know, I remember um, being in Pakistan and on the on the way to a Gurdara Yatra, all the BBI were singing, um, these uh, Guru Nanak related songs, you know, like Nanak Veer and Bharti uh, Amrita and all these songs. And I was thinking the future generation mm. will never know these if they don't get in touch with their roots. Mm. And this is why Punjab is important for us. Every single one of us, we care about Punjab. And, you know, hopefully at the end of this podcast, we'll talk about ways in which we can keep in touch with Punjab mm. and make Sikhi flourish there hopefully as well. I think Paisa, that's really important what you said about exploring the context of Punjab and understanding the context and especially because we see things through the Western lens and even like understanding like I heard recently by Amrit Pal Singh, he spoke about like feminism and like a lot of Bibiya came, like my sister spoke to me after and they were like, it makes so much sense now the the actual, the Westernized feminism has got nothing to do with Sikhi. It's mm-hmm. completely different to a Sikhi feminism. And I just like, what, what are your thoughts on that kind of stuff as well? I mean, my thoughts on that, I, I'm going to stay quite uh, oh, like, neutral. Whoa, 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 to <laughs> I'm going to stay neutral on that because I've got a wife and a daughter that's going to watch this and I don't want to get shot. So no, my views are um, exactly what Gurbani says, that we are all females. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're finding our true self mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, we're trying, we're trying to reunite with our, mm-hmm. what I says, uh, mm-hmm. 
that mm. we're just trying to to, to get to our, our husband lord guru sahib is me so happy with you <laughs> <laughs> what a great answer <laughs> yeah no it, for us there, there is no male and female in gurbani mm. when guru sahib wrote gurbani guru sahib wrote gurbani for a human he yeah. didn't say this is for a a, a, a male or a female mm. so for us we shouldn't we should see both alike absolutely yeah 100%. That's great. And uh just to even build upon that then uh we took all these questions about Punjab and Viji talking about context. What about a bit of context to Punjab? Like what is Punjab because technically people think there's one Punjab but Punjab is split yeah across two countries, right? So Punjab itself at the moment Punjab mm-hmm. is um around 50,000 square kilometers. 50,362 to be uh, precise. Mm. it's actually only 6% of what it used to be wow. so maharaja ranjit singh's punjab included areas such as gilet um kyber um areas such as uh, ladakh kashmir and it was actually around 880,000 square kilometers 8 800,000 879,329,000 square kilometers to be precise and it was huge so could we compare that to something in that I'll give you know. a comparison so Pakistan at the moment is 770,000 square kilometers so wow. that's the whole of Pakistan so if you get the whole of Pakistan add 100,000 square kilometers onto it yeah. that was the size of Maharashtra and Singh Punjab wow that's huge it was huge so we're 6% of what Punjab was so it got um, broken down when the british took over mm. um, 1911 delhi was annexed and so many other things then punjab was then you know kind of partitioned into and then trifurcated again with himachal and haryana breaking off so it's kind of it's become tiny but just to kind of give you some facts about punjab as it is at the moment it's got a population around uh, 28 million yeah i think it's 27.98 million at the moment 28 million that's the same population size as what nepal has as a country mm-hmm. there's around 50 60 countries that have less population in their country than punjabas for example mm. if i said to you saving australia you'd think oh my god that's a huge job <laughs> australia's got a population size of i think 9 million okay if i said to you hong kong yeah hong kong's got less people in there than punjab mm. if i said to you switzerland denmark holland all these countries have got less population less people in there than mm. punjab in terms of the geographical area punjab has got 50 countries that are smaller than punjab so The, the size of Punjab is like the size of Costa Rica. Uh, and and sorry, got, just to yeah. jump in, even the population-wise, just to put it into context, I think London's about 11 million. So you can see that. Yeah. And we're all dense in one little city. Yeah, so you could see that Punjab's, saving Punjab is a huge task. Because it's like if I said to you saving um, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's got a um, smaller population than Punjab. Mm. So, but the whole th- the whole point is I'm not here to say to you the job's hard. I'm mm. saying we can absolutely do it. Mara says je guru da thapda hove ta lashkar hoye swa da basically keeda the thap dai padshai the guru sahib gives the thapda to a keeda he could take an army out mm. and that's what guru sahib you know for us there's no task too small and especially punjab and remember the, the kind of deep rooted answer to saving punjab is sikhi at the end of the day for me it is mm. the reason to start off saving punjab was because you know reading sekatias and seeing the situation we're in at the moment if you look at what happened in the 80s the 70s everything linked back down to manukhi adhikar the human rights they mm. were talking about the anandpur mata which was punjab's pani punjab's maa boli the, the, the just the human rights the the anandpur mata turned on to the taram yud morcha which turned was uh, started on something called the kapuri morcha kapuri morcha was about the s wild canal issue which we're all talking about today mm. and it all goes back to them human rights of panjab the land of five rivers currently yeah. has two and a half rivers mm. both which are dry panjab linked to the language shamukhi gurbani uh, all all that Punjab at the moment if you look at the last four consensus is you know 1991 2001 2011 2021 and see how Punjab is reducing in Punjab mm. so if Punjab itself doesn't have the land of five rivers it doesn't have Punjab being there anymore mm. what right is it to be called Punjab mm. and the the 1966 reorganization of India they reorganized the whole of India on the basis of well they organized it in 1950 55 Punjab was reorganized 10 years later mm. because of the Punjabi Sabha Morcha So they created Punjab smaller because Punjabi wanted to maintain and keep its its language. 
But if it doesn't have Punjabi language in there anymore, if it doesn't have the land of five rivers anymore, they could turn around and do a reorganization of India as they want tomorrow and, and Punjab could be wiped off the map. How, how, what could we do to stop that? Mm. We couldn't do anything mm. because we don't actually have the language. We, you know, And the language, if you speak to anybody, anyone watching this podcast, if you just speak to people in the you know, back home in your parents and see how many of them are actually speaking Punjabi, mm. many of them think Punjabi is a backward language. Mm. English and Hindi are the way forward. Yeah. And if we're... You know, getting rid of our roots, as I spoke about before, that core language, then we're going to lose so much in terms of our values, you know, our future, everything starts off from that marble. And Padi, mm. even the crazy thing is pre colonialism, Punjab had the highest literacy rates, right? Absolutely. And it had yeah. so much wealth. GW and- Letner, he came from the Europe, Europe and he went there and he says that, oh my God, he goes, every house has a scholar. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different schools of thought. They had mastery schools in arts, miniature arts, sculpting, languages. So it was it was absolutely the way for Lahore. Uh, I went recently, and in Lahore you can see so many schools that were set up at that time, mm-hmm. the capital of Punjab, uh, and it was so deep. I mean, like, there, there could be a whole hours podcast on what the education system in Punjab, Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Maha Punjab, like. mm-hmm. and think about it. Like you know, we talk about Raj. Another thing, because that, that is our, our, our homeland, is our Raj, is Punjab. Mm. And Raj is important in the concept of Gurbani anyway. Guru Sahib says, Raj bina, nae taram chale. Mm. Guru Sahib, because if, like, you, you guys went to school in the UK. Did they teach you about Henry VIII? Yeah. 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 Why? Because Raj or not that. They could yeah. teach you about whatever they want you to teach you because they have control of what they want to teach you. Yeah. In Punjab at the moment, the, the way Sikhi is being taught, is very if you go on our page we did a whole kind of um, a video on how the textbooks in Punjab at the moment the the version of tiki, uh, Sikhi they're teaching is is corrupt and uh, you know if I just give you a few facts on there it's like they said um, Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj was um, depressed committed suicide Guru Har Gobind Singh Maharaj um, had people sleep at his pillow because uh, he was scared Guru Arjan Dev Ji committed suicide. Um, oh, Guru Tegh Bahadurji was a chor. He, you know, I, I feel bad just even saying these yeah, words up my mouth. But this it. is, yeah. mm. these are textbooks that are taught in A level, and I can give you all the references to all the textbooks that say this. And that's being taught in Punjab at the moment. Why? Because the controls are not in your hands. Mm. They can get you to teach whatever they want. And I think what the kind of what, what what the point I was trying to make here, because the land, the question you asked, you know, is this home? We, you know, in the diaspora, the British bond, colonialism. Until we have our own Raj, our own power, our own kind of sovereignty, where Guru Sahib says, mm. He gave us Baat Shahi. Mm. Until we have control of that, then we will not be able to make Dharam flourish. Mm. We will, but it will only be, I'd say, it come to a point that it's going to flourish where we get Khal Saraj mm. is where we, we get our own home first. Mm. And they're my opinions. Mm. And just, I know all these questions you're asking uh, to you and you're giving the answers, we're kind of like, uh, like going around the topic because you mentioned that we're going to go through certain things in more detail. Uh, but just the final question that we, I think we should get into that, the nitty gritty and some of the key points uh, that you guys are tackling uh, when it comes to Savior Punjab. But uh, like you said yourself, and we spoke earlier that you're, you're a teacher, yes. so a science teacher and you've got a family. Uh, but then from, again, I'm guessing you were born, yeah, born and bred in Bradford as well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, from here in the UK. And a lot of people may hear about this stuff, what's happening in Punjab, and, you know, and we may be concerned about it, but then there's a difference being with being concerned and, and being educated about it, but then there's a difference with actually doing something about it. So why did you start this, Eva? Um, from maybe living a comfortable life, uh, you know, being a teacher and a family, what made you want to, Take this further because I know you travel to Punjab. You travel to you're traveling to Kanda. You've been to Kanda, going around the world. But what what gave you that final push? I've been doing this your whole life. <laughs> so, the, what Saving Punjab is is a research based educational organization. Mm. What our aim is is to kind of we all know Punjab's issues, mm. but how can we prove it? Where's the data to say this is what's happening? So the research we're doing, we've just taken on 11 new researchers internationally from around the world, uh, experts in many fields. And what they, they're they going to be doing is doing research on the actual true issues in Punjab at the moment so that we can prove it on paper that this is what's happening. 
why did I start saving my job? Um, when I did my bi- biology degree, I did um, the dissertation I did was on Malwa, the cancer cases in Malwa uh, linked to the pesticides used there. Mm. And that, when I started looking into it, it blew my mind away on what's going on in Punjab mm. and how this area of 1.5, I mean, compared to India, is tiny. It's a 1.53% geographical area of, of, of India is tiny. And it's like the cancer capital. It's got the highest amount of hepatitis C uh, in terms of hep- uh, hypertension and blood pressure. It's the highest. It's the highest in heart disease. Um, it's the highest in HIV AIDS. So many issues, that second in diabetes, that just kept coming up and coming up. And I was thinking, this is this is crazy. Like this is our home and it's riddled with so many problems. And they're just the health problems I told you. Mm. Social issues, whether it's to do with migration, whether it's to do with unemployment, whether it's to do with debt, you know, um, so many factors that Punjab has been affected by. And what, you know, if we can't take care of that now, then what future does Punjab have? Mm. So I think when when we look at Punjab, I say this again, I'm not just looking at Punjab as, you know, the the culture, the the food, the the dancing and all that. that, that that's that bit aside, I'm looking at 75% of our com mm. that is having to live through this. You know, why is this such a huge migration out of Punjab? Mm. Because the the ground reality of Punjab at the moment is not a place people want to live in. Mm. And if people don't want to live there, there's the, the, either that situation has been created for them, you know, through um, a struggle because they fought for their rights and to kind of make life easy for those people, you know, say make them migrate out or, you know, bring them to such an issue where they can't think about the other issues. They're just thinking about survival. Mm. So, you know, suicides, all these things, they, they kind of, they are a web. One issue is always related to another issue. I'll give you an example. You're a farmer. You have to buy your seeds. You have to buy your diesel. You have to buy all these things, you know, kind of in credit. You have to buy it in debt. So when you buy it, you are gambling the fact that it might rain. You know, you might get a pest on your crop. All these things might happen. And if if that happens, your crop's destroyed. You can't pay the interest. Mm. Hence why Punjab has one of the highest rates of farmer suicides. So with that, you might think, okay, it's a lot of, a mental pressure, mental illnesses come in. You think from that farming, you could get into debt, which also leads on to people becoming uh, drug addicts. It also leads on to people um, gambling. It, it, there's so many issues of agriculture. If you're um, a farmer, you might be using pesticides. And because there's a lack of education, how much to use, when to use them, how to if to use PPE, PPE or not to use PPE, then you get health problems. Um, the water is issued interlinked with agriculture. You know, the ground level water is reducing. They're irrigating their fields with tube wells because canal systems don't have water in them anymore. And the, the kind of the whole system in itself is interlinked. And if you fall, find yourself in that web, you think the only way to get out of this issue is migrate out of Punjab. Mm. And this is what you're seeing with students at the moment. They would rather come to the UK and live eight in a house and work for four pound a day, mm. then own their own land and live off the land or work in a restaurant or be, you know, because you, you see the hardships that the the, my, the Punjabis that are coming here are facing at the moment. Andy. And you'd think how desperate must they be to come here and want to live that life here mm. where we're thinking we'd love to go live the life over there. Mm. So I think there's a, there's an issue of greed in there. There's, a, there's other kind of social issues where psychologically they've been, programmed to think that it's better life is better out here and mm. i think we we are up to f- fault for that as well when we go back and flaunt our cash or make these big quotidien with yeah. a, 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 a airplane as a water tank or a football yeah, on a water yeah, tank crazy. and they're empty yeah like, you, i spoke to a bazaar recently and he you know he was just like and it's it's a shame because that they would have seen that rangla punjab mm. that we only hear about and mm. we want to our aim is to make that Punjab Ranglang. And so going back to your question, mm. why did it start? There's loads of reasons why it started. The research itself needs to be done because um, with research, like if I said to you, if you if something's wrong with your car, what do you do? Diagnose it. I'll call the mechanic. Go to a garage. <laughs> yeah. And what does he do? Does he start fixing it or what does he do first? No. He diagnoses it, Diagnose, doesn't he? Yeah. And if Punjab's got issues at the moment, unless we know the scale, the magnitude, the areas that need to be focused, mm. you know, understand the kind of root cause of the problem, then 
we how are we going to tackle it? My so, God. for example, Punjab's got a cancer issue. If we just keep running cancer camps, then that's just putting a kind of bandaid on a broken leg, as I say. Mm. It's not actually tackling the issue of what's causing that cancer. Is it chemical mm. spills from factories? Is it pesticide residue in the soil? We need to kind of go to the root cause to these problems and tackle it from the root cause. And that's what research does for us. Mm. And so, Baisab, you mentioned about the researchers. So are you, are you getting, are you like hiring multiple researchers? Yeah, so they're all on volunteer basis. There's 12 that we've taken on at the moment. I think four from Canada, four from Punjab, some from the UK, Europe. And we put an application out for uh, research volunteers to kind of apply. And those only those people that applied that would have research kind of expertise uh, so we're really lucky that we've taken on those people that are experts in certain fields and, and can take this now to the next level of research so that we can start writing academic papers and, and kind of taking that to the next the next step now. And if somebody wants to get involved and do some research, we'll just reach out to you guys on Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. Our email address, uh, info at savingpunjab.org or it, all our social medias go directly to us so they can. I mean, we set up a program which is... It, one of the questions you're going to ask later on yeah. about future projects. But I'll, I'll say it now because it kind of falls quite mm. uh, relevant to the topic we're talking. So when you're at university, like I did, when you do a dissertation topic, you can do it on anything. Mine was a biology degree and mm. I could have chose any topic. And I chose Punjab, the mm. cancer and the pesticides. And what we want is we've done, uh, we've started this dissertation project in which we want the next generation of academics to use whatever expertise in the, what they're studying in to use whatever they're doing to do it about Punjab. And, you know, they're thinking, why Why do I need to do it Punjab? So there's a few reasons. Firstly, for us, you're, you're getting in touch with your roots. If you're going to be researching Punjab, you might be thinking, okay, what's going on in Punjab? You might become attached to Punjab again, you know. Um, and in that, what do we gain from that as saving Punjab? So we're gaining a fresh pair of eyes to the issue. Hmm. Someone might come along and think of some genius idea that we've not thought about before. Like Punjab's got a water issue, the water's depleting. They might think, okay, rainwater conservation or something that they see in their research that we haven't picked up on. Brilliant. Let's do something with it. How can we support them? So what are we doing for them? We've already got researchers. We've got a bank of resources. We've got dissertations that have already been written as exam examples. So what these... A student coming on and doing a dissertation, we can buddy them up with a researcher or we can, you know, uh, give them access to our resources as such so that they can do their dissertation Punjab specific. We're benefiting from it because we're having people back in touch with Punjab and doing the research and a fresh pair of eyes. Mm. And we're also supporting them because they're doing something for Punjab. So that's one of the projects we're running at the moment. It's called the Dissertation Project. So anyone wanting to do a dissertation mm. in the future on Punjab, or Punjab's issues, or even if it's Sikhi related, mm. then we can get them in touch with the right people, mm. help them out, give them the data that they might need. Or if there's primary research they need on the ground, we can get them in touch with one of our researchers to get the primary research done. So that, that kind of is the best way, you empowering them, the Punjabi people themselves to basically fix the problem. This yeah. is the whole model of saving Punjab. Mm. As in, you, we're not, we haven't got a magic wand where we're going to say we're going to save Punjab. Mm. We want to be just the, the the people that give the the research and say, look, this is how the panth could work more efficiently. For example, we did a think tank event. Basic Stasiki came to it in February. We did a survey in two thousand late 2019, 2020, um, which was called the MyPrint survey. Now, how much do you guys know about your prints at the moment? Just roughly where it yeah. is and just the so, name. So the, <laughs> just the name. <laughs> so what we wanted to do was get a the diaspora touch back with their pain so that mm. you know the, the core issues in Punjab, such as, you know, is there any cancer cases? Is there drug addicts? What's the mm. school system like? Is there an ambulance within five kilometers? That was one of the questions on the survey. Wow. We had around 15,000 people fill it out. It was really good. Mm. The data we collected, we crunched it. We got data analysts to look at it. And that then we wanted to present that to the organizations that potentially could do something with it. So we had 30 organizations, all the names, as you can think of the main humanitarian works. Mm. Um, I won't name many names, but I'll, mm. everyone was there basically. And yeah. we, we gave them that data saying, look, if you want to plant trees, here's where the trees need to be planted. If you want to do something with cancer, these are the areas where the cancer is the highest. If you want to do something um, helping, like for example, there's only 33% of Punjab have access to an, uh, an ambulance within five kilometers of their paint. Mm. So almost to run with that project, we can give them the data and say, 
Here's the areas where there's no ambulance. Even if there's one ambulance between five villages, how many millions of lives could you be saving mm. by just putting an ambulance within five five villages? Mm. So what we want to do is give people the guidance, the strategy, and say to them, the panth themselves, it, it needs to be done. Not just organizations, but each individual person needs to invest back in their paint. Mm. If you invest in your paint, you're more likely to go there yearly. Mm. You're more likely that if you if you've got land, you don't sell that land. That's mm. one of the other appeals I want to give to the Nordjo. Mm. Is most likely we'll probably face some hardship in our life where we think, should we just sell the land that our parents owned, our grandparents owned? And it's very easy to do that. But absolutely we should not be doing that because it changes the demographics, it changes what's happening in Punjab. One prime example I'll show you, how did Israel come to be? If you look at the what happened with Palestine, they they bought Israel. The Jewish went in and paid two million for something that might have been two two hundred thousand pounds and just made the country. <coughs> look what happened in Kashmir after the Article 370 was taken away out of India. Article 370 was Kashmir had special rights into which it could only a Kashmiri could buy land in Kashmir. It had its own passport, it had its own flag. And they removed that from the Indian constitution. Now anybody can go in Kashmir and buy land. And what's been happening over the last few years is people have been going into Kashmir that are non-Kashmiris and just buying houses, you know, 10 times their value. Mm. Why? Because that changes the demographics in terms of the ground level. Mm. And the similarly is happening in Punjab. So 70% of the workforce in Punjab at the moment is from outside of Punjab, is from UP and Bihar. And anybody watching this podcast, you can ask your parents, asking the parent, oh, how many Baharis or UP people have bought Kotiya in the villages, are the ones that are the landowners now. And if if Punjabis aren't in Punjab anymore, then who's gonna what's Punjab gonna be like in the next 10, 20 years' time? Mm. Them kind of crimes that Punjab never had seen is now being seen in Punjab. Mm. Rape was never prominent in Punjab. Rape's mm. now prominent. Um chain snatching. Where they used to, you know, people used to just snatch chains from, but it was never an issue. Now it's becoming on the rise. So, so many issues that are changing because the demographics are changing. Mm. It's to understand that if we don't invest back in Punjab as the diaspora, mm. then who is going to, and what is going to be the future of Punjab? And just on another scale, linking to the Kisan Murcha, uh, a lot of industrialists and like global globalization, a lot of these big like uh, corporations. Like corporations, Ambani, these people are buying up all the land just mm. to make like factories and make it all Absolutely, yeah. automated. And obviously with that side, you're losing so much in terms of the workforce as well, right? Muscle drain, brain drain. Why? Because mm. unemployment is one of the highest in Punjab and those people that, that, you know, get educated, the one idea they have is they're not going to get a job in Punjab. So they migrate, whether it's internally within India or they migrate outside. So if we're um, draining, you know, the kind of brains of Punjab, then what's the future going to be like as well? Mm. So how can we, uh, have you categorized the issues? Um, how, how, how have you identified what the different issues in Punjab? So we've categorized the issues into to five groups, mm. five being our um, lucky number Punjab. Mm. So, I mean, the first kind of uh, category is social issues. Social issues covers debt, migration, unemployment. So many kind of issues within migration, I've told you. Migration in itself, hundred and so the national average of India, 163 people per lakh are leaving to migrate out of Punjab. So sorry, just what is a lakh? A lakh is 100,000. Mm. So 163 people per 100,000 are leaving in the whole of India, national average. In Punjab, it's 859. Mm. That's in Punjab. So that's like five times the value. Mm. In Chandigarh, Per lakh, it's 10,100 per lakh people leaving. 10,000. 10,000, yeah. Punjab has the highest number of uh, fake agents mm. than anywhere else in India. What does so, that mean by fake agents? So people that would get you to another country okay. without official means. Mm -hmm. So it might be in that they make you fake documents or um, get you somewhere through a student visa to get you out somewhere. Oh, so. That's the social issue. So within them, social issues falls the drugs. Punjab's number three for drug overdose, uh, number two for alcohol-related poisoning and deaths, uh, number one in NDP acts in the whole of India at the moment. So Punjab itself, in terms of drugs, is absolutely, you know, in the highest category mm. in, in just from this 1.5 geographical area. <coughs> Second issue being um, health. 
So we've touched upon health. Uh, <clears throat> Punjab is the capital for hepatitis, capital for HIV, capital for uh, heart disease, capital uh, um, number two for diabetes. So many issues in Punjab in terms of health. Um, and within that, you're talking about mental health as well. So just yesterday we put a post up, 20% 20 rise in Punjab's mental health uh, disorders. One in eight uh, people in Punjab are suffering from mental health. 80% of them have never received any type of medical treatment to deal with that mental illness. So the, the issues around the social issues in, in themselves, debt being huge, unemployment being huge within that. The second category um, um, from social issues, health issues, then it's uh, education. So education kind of overlaps all the issues, uh, being it language, uh, the current education system at the moment, where around 78% of the education system at the moment is privatized. Mm. Um, so anyone that goes to public school is usually from a poor family. Um, similarly with the hospitalization in Punjab, so uh, linking back to the health, 78% of those people that go to hospital uh, are private hospitals. Only 20-30% go to public hospitals. Mm. And if you look at the kind of last post that we've put, the last, the high, Punjab is the highest in uh, the whole of India place to get ill after Delhi. So if you get ill, it's the highest place in terms of, sorry, let me rephrase that. Punjab, if you were to spend a night in a hospital, Punjab has the highest cost in the whole of India after Delhi. So if you're going to get ill, don't get ill in Punjab. Because <laughs> it's the it's extortion at the moment, the pri privatization. And this is what, linking back to the Kasan Murcha, why they didn't want to privatize. They learned from the schools being privatized, from the hospitals being privatized. And if they pri privatize the Mondays, they know that the prices could fluctuate however they want to fluctuate. Mm. So education, um, within that falls, um, we've got a human humanitarian, so it's human resources and environment, which is our fourth bracket uh, that covers kind of the water issue. So how the groundwater is depleting, 75% is being diverted to other states. Uh, soil fertility, how soil fertility is basically um, on its way down in Punjab. Um, other kind of agricultural issues falls in the, the human resources, environmental issues such as deforestation, um, pollution, all fall within that uh, category as well. So we've got social issues, health issues, uh, human resources, environment issues, education issues. And the last one is religious issues. So mm. religious is a bracket on its own. Uh, kind of understanding what what is going on in Punjab, but mainly focused around uh, the biad biyan that are happening in Punjab. What is the kind of cause? Why are they happening? You know, the kind of uh, religious texts that have been changed, um, historical sites that have been um, kind of destroyed, um, why there's been mass conversions, um, and all these things that are, are going on religiously. There's research going on them factors as well. Mm. Mm. Before we touch upon even this religious bit more, um, even though these are like five different categories, they all link, absolutely. Like you said, yeah. right? So, like uh, for example, somebody could be um, have lack of education, like you spoke about earlier, when it comes to that pesticides and what what are the right things to use, and that can lead to social issue, issues like debt and then suicide, and that links to health, and then it's like it's like a vicious cycle, <coughs> right? Absolutely. I think for me, education is the most important. Okay. Why? Because. There's a famous saying, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Mm. If you teach a man to fish, he eats for life. So if we can educate the next generation on preventative measures, mm. we're already in the right stepping stones to save Punjab. I'll give you an example. When you went to school, did they teach you to turn the tap off when you're brushing your teeth to save water? I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah. We always got taught that. If you're yeah. brushing your teeth, if you brush your teeth, <laughs> to, turn, <laughs> to turn the tap off because you, the water is just running for no reason. Yeah. Uh, to have a shower rather than have a bath yeah. because a bath uses more water. So the, all these things that I remember being taught to reduce, reuse, recycle. recycle. How many of the next generation of Punjab have been taught this? Mm. That you could be reducing this, you could be reusing this, you could be doing this. Education's key. You know, if if a farmer is not using PPE because he doesn't know how to, I mean, there's a, there was a statistic I was reading in some of my research that um, I think around 30% 30, 30 of the tubs that contain the pesticides are then used to take roti, uh, you know, like when they are dabaya, dabaya roti palo. And that still has residue that is so harmful for human consumption. So like the education that this is really bad for you 
is not being obviously portrayed to the farmer in Punjab. Mm. Uh, whether it's kind of again reducing using uh, the water, whether it's educating them on why Punjab is important, on mm. why they should stay in Punjab, why you know wh- where we should be kind of helping those people stay in Punjab mm. rather than trying to leave if they need you know a business. We think about a sustainable solution long term that we can keep them in Punjab. Mm. So there's research being doing on all these kind of um, I could say across these topics mm. um, on how we can keep the people in Punjab how can we invest like we could even run out a scheme of go back to Punjab you know like so doctors engineers all these people that are left they did the same and I think it was in Israel they gave them a scheme to say look we'll pay you X amount to go back yeah. and go back to your home so we in the diaspora have got you know where in terms of the UK so we're the second most given to a charitable cause mm. but most of the time we're not giving to Punjab we're mm. giving to other causes <clears throat> but yeah. If you're not happy at home, then, you know, are you going to be happy anywhere else? Mara says, Kar suk vasea, mm. bar suk I know the reference to that is the, yeah. the home within, mm. but <clears throat> if we take of that being our home also, mm. then, you know, we should focus our energy on the pant, as in 75% of our pant is in Punjab. Mm. Make sure the parchar is brilliant in uh, in Punjab. Make sure that um, the the, the the people in Punjab are, are sukhi in terms of health, in terms of social issues, in terms of education, in terms mm. of religious issues. So we, we're kind of looking at that factor as well. Mm. And then when you've got bread on the table, you can think about other things like yeah. bringing our water back mm. or, um, you know, fighting for our rights. Because I think at the moment they're so distracted with the, just the nitty gritty of how to survive. Mm. They're not thinking about anything else. Mm. Like Darbar Sahib was attacked in 1984. Why was Darbar Sahib attacked? Because they were fighting for their rights. What rights were they fighting for? They were Manukhi Adhikar, your water rights, the Kapuri, the Morcha, SYL Canal, and language rights. But how many people since 1984 have said, we want to bring our water back? We mm. want to fight for our Punjabi rights. We've forgotten about the issue. Mm. We, we remembered the day that we were attacked, but we, we forgot why we were fighting. Mm-hmm. And the reason we forgot, because we've been distracted so much. And it ultimately goes back down to, yeah, the, the foundation was laid on that day that we now realize we don't want to be, you know, with India. We want to. We want our own home. Yeah. And we stick by that one hundred percent. But we want to be at a point when we get our home that Punjab is not a desert. Yeah. yeah that Punjab yeah. is not just full of nishai. That Punjab is not just in a place where we can't actually survive, um, and people don't want to live there. So it's getting to that point. And the crazy thing <clears> is, by <throat> like you mentioned about the SYL canal, like um, Siddhu Musewala, he released a song on it. And like I know Deep Siddhu, he also mm. spoke about uh, about it. All these people who actually wake up and start speaking out about it, they get like killed off. And mm. it's like it's it's such a corrupt system at the moment. So like I know you're saying on one side the education, but on the political side, is there how does your like research affect that side? In terms of the the political side, mm. um, I mean, believe it or not, we've had. Um, they are very eager to be in communication with us. Yeah. The SDO for the water management has reached out to us and kind of from quite many different levels, they're reaching out to us. It's kind of politically, I think the whole system, someone once asked me, you know, which political party should we support? <laughs> and I said to him, I was like, the political party is just a face. I go, they all are the same. You know, there's no actual difference between any political party. Mm. Um, it's not the political party that we're interested in. It's not the politics we're interested in. We're interested in the the ground reality of the average pinned person and them kind of investing back into their pins. And imagine if we, we future-proofed our pins, and this is the kind of project we're working on at the moment, which is my pin. Mm. So the project goes back down to is, why not make our pins future-proof that you would want to go live there? You know, mm. to have sustainable energy, whether it's solar panels, windmills, but having a water system that works, that, you know, conserves water, having an education system, modernizing them so that we, you know, like our parents like to go and spend a few months out there. We'd love to go spend a few months home mm. and making that so that the next generation would want to do that. But to do that, we need to, as the next generation, now invest back into our pins and making sure, yeah. like you said, you know very little about your pin. Find out what is it that the pinder needs. Does it need mm. some kind of, um, you know, help with the sewage system? Does it need help with whatever it needs help with? Mm. We should start putting that that help into place now. It's, it reminds me of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj's story where he went to a pind and the, the, they didn't treat Guru Sahib really well. And he says, Vasudero. Mm. 
<laughs> and the other paint by guru saban he says ujjad jao um pai mardana ji says why did you say to these guys ujjad jao and ina luka da vas de raho he goes jithe change bhi aao oh ujjad jaan te utthe sare passe ja ke change bhi you know vas de hmm. and i think i feel like that with the calm in punjab at the moment i think the diaspora we've managed to fly out hmm. and now it's our time to kind of give back as well and yeah, i think hmm. it's our duty to give back as well and uh we you spoke a lot about identifying issues and what we can do uh, to kind of resolve those even inside of the my pinned project as well uh do you have an example of, of something you've identified as an issue and then also providing a solution so you know people listening think oh that actually worked and that builds momentum there's loads i mean if, I, i'll give you some just from the top of my head a, we we pinpointed the areas where the drug cases are the highest mm. so um we working with a few organizations uh that are going into schools at an early level and you know doing the preventative work so that they make sure that they don't go on to the drugs in the first place and using kind of live case studies or examples of people that have rehabilitated from the drug problem mm. so that's just kind of an on an education system but we're also looking at a drug that was uh, rolled out in Canada sorry not in Canada in Scotland and it's it's patent drug that basically um it's it's had a uh, 90% success rate with opioids which is one of the main drugs in Punjab um and you take the drug and you don't want to you take the kind of medication and you don't you, you basically it gives you um it gives you the symptoms but it it kind of helps you get off the opioids basically i don't want to go into the technicalities of it hmm. um so that's kind of something we're look exploring at the in terms of the environment so there's a there's a a farm in punjab that's taken upon organic uh, farming and we're looking at kind of how we can now mass scale that how they have done it and how we can take that to farmers in punjab so one of the ways uh, we're thinking is one of the systems we're looking at is being the kind of insurance for a farmer so if if you've uh, you know if you show us for the last few years that you've this has been your crop yield and this is what you've taken out of it and if we say okay next year try organic and this is what you need to do and any kind of loss that you make within that like if it's 10% 20% then we will make sure that they're not losing out but they're going organic mm. and for people to sponsor their farmers of their villages to do that wow um there's a rain gun from France that uses 70% less water um and it's basically you, you see it in the UK I mean, maybe not in the UK in Europe where it fires out like water onto a field mm. what they do in currently in Punjab is they just flood the field when yeah. they're planting rice mm, uh, this rain gun the, the the people that have trialed and tested it in Punjab says that it, the crop yield has been the same mm. 70% less water wow. uh, so we're looking at kind of that and how we can mask it that uh punjab spins we want to make a watering system where it rains it captures the water and harnesses it uh, to either a recharge the ground water so pumping it back down into the ground mm. or holding it in a high density water, water pot, uh, uh, kind of water tank so that if the the water's ever needed from the pond that they can use it for livestock or irrigate the fields or even uh, doing that on a house scale So in Thailand they deployed over half a million rainwater conservation systems to help the water system there. So it just means that when it rains it kind of captures into a water bin and then you can use that water to again feed your livestock or wash your car so you're not pumping up water just to wash your car. Mm. So it's kind of that's just from the top of my head we've got a long list of sustainable solutions that we're looking at mm. that could potentially work in Punjab. Mm-hmm. you know one of them is punjab's um the water tanks in punjab have got a common thing that they overflow and it's just like a simple device that could be used to kind of make sure that the the, the kind of overflow valve doesn't break and it stops the overflowing how much water you're saving there mm-hmm. again how many issues there are in punjab like the migration issue why is the migration an issue because unemployment's highest mm-hmm. so why don't we create somewhere that some investment in punjab that we're keeping those people so on services basis or however we're looking at kind of a project based on that entirely mm. in itself with a few organizations that are helping mm. with that so the sustainable solutions are going to be done by you guys mm. we're going to give you the ideas but we want the panth to run with them we want people to say hang on a minute 
that this is what we want to do. Like one of the other ideas is why don't we set up a prachar team where we've got we get twelve organizations mm. and they take a month each in terms of doing prachar in Punjab. Mm. Yeah, so basics to Sikhi does January, another organization is just February, and we we kind of uh, the twenty three, twenty two districts in Punjab we divvy them out so we're not kind of overlapping and doing what we're doing. So just mm. becoming a bit more strategic. Mm. So we've already spoke to about six seven organizations that want to roll onto this plan, mm. and we basically allocate a month each where we go out there and we do the prachar that's needed in in kind of um, a certain strategic way. So it's about working more efficiently mm. as a part so that we're not always throwing money at the the kind of um the the cure mm. we're actually investing the money into the prevention in the first place Anji. yeah one of the examples I'll tell you again like um in tw- 2019 Punjab was flooded 300 villages were flooded uh, it was because of a dam called Parkara dam that holds Punjab's water outside of Punjab opened its gates and flooded Punjab mm. and the area that was flooded it was the Ladiana area um, which is basically the reason is is that the people at the moment they pick up sand because there's a whole sand mafia in Punjab at the moment that's a whole issue in itself mm. and uh, they just take the sand and what happens is because the the river banks or the canal banks are uh, you know they're not solid anymore because they've just taken the sand away they become kache and what happens is when the water comes in in the power it comes it overflows onto villages where the area of uh, the the kind of kande or the the banks are, are not solid Anji. now to get the bank solid the, the punjab government could easily invest half a million and get that solid mm. but we spent 19 million pounds in the diaspora giving aid to them villages mm. so strategically you know we'd love to give money to if there's a disaster or someone mm. needs it mm. but we don't actually think okay why don't we invest in diagnosing or invest in what's yeah. the best way to actually tackle this issue mm. and i think as the com we look at research as being uh, if i put money in research i'm not really putting a spoon you know yeah. in someone's mouth mm. but it to actually look and see like every company out there they will have someone that comes in and does like a full audit and kind of see where we're we losing money how we're we doing this what we're we doing that do we do that with the pant do we say mm-hmm. how many organizations but they all you know are they working in synergy with each other are they you know are they doing separate things or they just repeating what the other organizations doing are th- mm-hmm. is planting trees actually helping punjab yeah. you know are the trees surviving are they in 3 years time if there's no groundwater mm. is it the right type of tree that for the the habitat so for punjab is research being done into these things as such it's something that we need to start thinking about as the next generation of thinking how do we work more efficiently Mm. So Paisa I think like just to summarize it you're saying we need to rather than being reactive we need to be proactive absolutely and that's yeah. exactly what the research is and just to give a personal uh, experience uh, example of of what what you're saying like in my own pind um like the family that have left the pind they set up a hospital there and they give everything subsidized and they have all the staff and stuff and I I got the chance to visit it this year and like Maraj get by it's all going well and it's just for for a family here it's nothing the cost f- to run the hospital is nothing for one family to just give the money right but for them it means so much and it can help so much so just an, uh, an example like that like there's so many more things you can do and the yeah. cost for us is is really nothing yeah mm. but it's something that we're going to have to think about on a on a wide scale we're already thinking about it mm. but we need to work as in like i said we haven't got a magic wand that saving punjab is going to actually save punjab mm. we're just we want to give the strategy the ideas the think tanks to bring people together and we do it collectively yeah. and just going back to the point about um the category of religious as well the religious side uh and when it comes to solutions uh because uh, i guess one the i uh, want the question somebody also asked uh, when we put the post on instagram was about uh the mass conversions uh, especially with the uh, christianity and these other uh, faiths or groups that are converting punjabis converting sikhs Uh, as well and i guess in one respect they almost find providing a solution for our people is that fair to say then they go what is this like why is this happening I, for i'll like, tell you why it's happening hmm. i think the the reason is is because punjabi culture has this very um clear part in it where it still believes in the caste system hmm. that was kind of forced upon it um and Punjab is the area in the whole of India Punjab is the only area with the highest percentage of scheduled caste people and they're the ones if you look statistically they're the ones that are converting mm. because as as a Sikh 
didn't actually accept them as sick. And I think that is that is where the issue lies and that is where we need to put the, the kind of work in. In the UK, we couldn't settle on Gurdwara and we had to make Gurdwara based on caste. Mm. So can you imagine that, psych, that, that kind of uh, thought process or that psychological kind of um, programming is still in the brains now living in the diaspora, even being it so kind of modern. Imagine what it's like in Punjab where they don't allow you to come sit in the langar. Or they say this is separate for you. Even as the fact of some amrit sanjars have happened, where mm. they they give separate amrit to those people that are of lower cost. And I think what they all they wanted was to be embraced, mm. and it's something that we couldn't do. We couldn't get out of our head, mm. and it's something we're going to have to really work on. And if, mm. unless we work on that, you know, there's no point trying to do mass parjar in Punjab because mm. they're going to think that you still have nafrat, mm. and it theahsically. It was them that stayed the closest to Guru Sahib till mm. the end. Mm. You know, Guru Sahib gave his jola and barna to one person, Sangat Singh. See where Sangat Singh was from. Mm. Where the Panj Pyare, what demographically where they were coming, what their, their family line, lineages were. Mara said, a grieb sikhan ko deyam paath Because they had nothing. Mm. Guru Sahib gave him the Taj, the Baj, gave mm. him Kaur Swar, gave him Raag, gave him everything yeah. that was royalty. Mm. And for them, Guru Sahib was everything that gave him actual mukti while they were alive. Mm. Liberated them. And they were the ones that with, without Tanakha, without anything, was fully submitted to Guru Sahib. Mm. And, and I think it's that, that key, that missing key there is what we need to start showing more PR to, to and, and take the culture a little bit away from the Dharam when it comes to like, okay, yeah, might, you might be pride, proud of your, what your caste is, mm. but in terms of Sikhi, that there is no caste. Mm. And I think it's, that is the biggest reason. That is my own uh, mm. uh, kind of observation from what's going on in Punjab at the moment. Mm. But um, I think the only way to tackle it is by tackling that is root first, eradicating that, mm. and then basically showing, where, you know, Marat says so many countless forms in Gurbani that Sab mein jot, jot hai soye, tiste channan, sab mein channan hoye. Guru Sahib mm. says that the lights in all, Marat says char varan ek varan karao. Like for Guru Sahib, there was no caste in it, but still for some reason, even I've seen Amritari Sikh still say, Give me, aha, ya. you know, whack in their thigh and this and that. <laughs> it, can't, it can't get out yeah, of the head because it's, it's so psychologically pro- programmed in the head that mm. I am of this certain caste. And and I think it's, it's that, like Guru Sahib bought in the, the name Singh and Kaur for a reason to mm. eradicate any kind of lineage that may, it may ek kal dayam, I'm from this Raj, I'm from this. Because mm. Guru Sahib just says that now we're just all Singh and Kaur. Mm. And that was, that was really important because like for me, I remember coming to the question of when my daughter was born, I was thinking, do I carry on the family name or not? And I was like, no. Mm. So she is just Amar Kaur. Mm. And for, for her, that you know, for her is she's she's got the most valuable name for me. That is the the the, the Guru Sahib, the name that Guru Sahib gave her, which is Kaur. So she doesn't need any other name. Mm. And I think that is something that we need to start again in our own kind of looking in our own house first as why are people going elsewhere? Mm. If Sikhi was you know, promoted or understood because people say actions speak louder than words, don't they? Yeah. You could sit on a stage and talk about how beautiful Sikhi is. Mm. But if you're going out and saying, nee, tu kaani sakada, ni kar sakada, to mm. a person that's, they're going to just see enough of it. Mm. And if someone, if you're hungry and someone's giving you food, they're God to you. Mm. Christian missionaries at the moment, they're feeding Punjab, they're mm. investing in Punjab. And for them, that's, you know, that's mm. everything for them. Thank you for that because I feel like you identified the the problem from two sides because I think a lot of times when we hear people's uh, thoughts on it, it's always focused on what the other people are doing of different faiths, but what we're not doing Absolutely. and what we should be doing, mm. which is again, like saying embracing those people and not turning our backs on them. And even just one clear thing that you point out was just this whole path, uh and, and the discrimination that is still taking place, not just in India, but Definitely. even here, like you said, you got like two guru cards uh, on in the same city or same town. Even Subway thinks I'm not going to open up a, um, another branch on the same road. <laughs> you know, yeah. Gurdwara, they've got like five good <laughs> branch for the Lord. They've got six Gurdwara within one mile. You're thinking mm. it's uh, in... that's that's crazy. Mm. Any questions from you? I, th- I think um, another question we got, which maybe links to this, is about how like the the, the how Khalsa would obviously help. A Punjab, and then it links to like Khalsa Raj in that sense. So, what what's your vichar on that? Well, I think Khalsa Raj is is inevitably Maharaj says. Mm. What did Maharaj start the Raj on? Mm. We're not talking about we're talking about Nanak Raj, isn't it? Maharaj mm. talks about Nanak Raj Chalaya. What's the foundation of it? Sach. Mm. 
God is standing. Guru Sahib, and when you have truth, and truth prevails. Mm. If you had control of your borders, would Nasha come in? No. If you had control of your education, would Punjabi flourish? Mm. If you had control of your health system, would cancer be the highest case in Punjab? Mm. The answer is there. As in, if the the control was with the Khalsa, Maharaj says Khalsa jo nirtan ko palle. Does nirtan di palna? Khalsa jo dusht ko galle. Khalsa jo naam jab kare. Khalsa jo mile se chade. Khalsa jo ninda te aage. Khalsa jo lade hoye aage. All these virtues of Guru Sahib gave Khalsa, they were prevalent and prominent today. Mm. Then we, there would be no issue. When Gurbani mm. says, Maharaj says in Gurbani says, Jaikar kiya tarmiya ka, e papi ko dand diyo, there would be no crime. Hmm. Santa manno duta danno e katwari meri that to you know to to praise the saints if there was saints that were given the padvi or given the highlight that they needed then there would be no issue in in Punjab today socially hmm. morally psychologically health hmm. every system as long as khalsa and gurmat is there there's no issue and i think even it links to like i heard the grad saying he always used to say this that um like we say these nare like dig dig fate raj karega khalsa right but we don't we don't even realize dig dig fate what does it even mean yeah it's deep and, I, and it's like you 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 you're feeding people mm. mentally and physically Physical. dig and dig you're giving them freedom but you're arming them with knowledge you're also giving them shastra with all of these things and then that's how you get fate right Absolutely. that's how we get raj raj karega khalsa but even with the miri piri philosophy as in guru sahib you know they're very kind of it's a, a very fine line a khalsa is miri and piri as in you can't have someone that says i can do these things and i can't do that as in khalsa needs to be mara says there's so many sikh that do puja of guru sahib and mara says sevak sikh pujan sab aave sab gaave har arut mani par what is it gaavya sunya tin ka thai paave jin sat guru ki aagya sat sat karmani only those that submit them guru sahib and whatever guru sahib says is sat sat to you mm-hmm. but if if i say to guru sahib now like guru sahib i can do this i can do that i can do this but if there's jolum happening i can't stand up against that you know then what does guru sahib say to that what is the point of you doing bhakti mara says salam jawab if i'm doing salam to something and jawab to something salam jawab do kore mundo kutta jaye nanak dove kudiyan basically if you're doing one thing and then saying to guru sahib i can't do this because of what is it going to be that's stopping you from doing it mm. it's going to be your own fear your ego your moti your family but what does guru sahib say about all them things mm. if we do matha take the guru sahib and, and, but if we don't accept what guru sahib saying then what is the point <clears throat> guru sahib talks about fear if i can't talk against india because mm. i'm scared mara says pe kahu ko de tne pe ne manatan mara says tis te upar na hi koi kaun dare dar kiska hoy soak de na har da jis te hove wal all these the gurbani took the same you if you've got fear in you then god can't be no when you the attributes of a sikh mm. guru sahib told in mool mantra nirpo nirvair mm. mm. har jan aisa chahiye jaisa hari ho if you want the virtue of guru sahib then you should be what guru sahib is mm. and guru sahib does not fear him sikh guru sikh uh, guru sikh sikh, sikh guru which guru upadesh like mm. the 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 virtues of a sikh should be the virtues of the guru and they should be the like so mm. would the guru fear If the guru fed would they say babar tu ja bhaya stand up against the tyrant mm-hmm. guru fed would they say on the tatti tavi mm-hmm. would they give their seeds and it's that siddhant that needs to be born back into the sect today now not everyone can do everything that's something that we need to always remember mm-hmm. if someone's out front and a mouthpiece and saying it mm-hmm. everyone doesn't have to say it as long as they have the search and they don't say that or oh, he shouldn't be saying that yeah not everyone can fight and be sangarshi mm-hmm. but as long as we are all in synergy of the people yeah. doing pagati are doing our das for those people that exactly. are, that are, yeah. are, are on in the ground mm-hmm. or whatever so that in itself as the kind of talking on the more sikhi side away from mm-hmm. the saving punjab side is is important that we have as a khalsa mm-hmm. the miri and piri aspect of sikhi and, but one without the other is stupid if i'm mm-hmm. fighting for something because this saving punjab is like a sangarsh mm-hmm. but if i don't know what i'm fighting for then what's the point of me doing it if mm-hmm. i don't have ashki or pyar for guru sahib then i'm just doing it for my own home Mm. If I'm and ultimately, if I'm just fighting and I don't have the bhakti, you know, it, it, it you need both in both hand in hand. Very important because uh, without that, you, you're nothing in it. And if you're basically just doing bhakti and you're forgetting the world, then Guru Sahib says that's not the way yeah. forward either. And like we have to live within the world. If there's jolum still happening in the world, then a Sikh has a job to do. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is is really important that we understand the whole package of Sikhi and being a Khalsa. and i think what you highlighted there is 
the the values core values of Sikhi is what we need right in mm. Punjab politically and in all aspects and like I don't know why people nowadays they sometimes shy away from saying oh we need the Khalsa to be ruling because in in, in fact all the things you you you've talked about if if the Khalsa did rule it would be like an ideal world right and like we look at all the Guru, Guru Sahib talks about in Barney yeah. you know we, we look at all the other countries like America Britain they all say we act out of our own interest the american interest in like iran or wherever they go but for the Khalsa we we do sarbat tapala so in fact if the Khalsa did we've rule we've done raj so we can give our example uh, the sikh percentage of the Khalsa raj was 10% Yep. 10% were ruling. Hmm. They never uh, discriminated anyone religion. They never said to anybody that you can't. They even Majar and Singh built mosques, built all the religion uh, religious places so that they could worship. Hmm. Like but the thing is with Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Raj, he was the ruler, but yep. he was submitted to Guru Sahib and Akal Takht. If they told him and summoned him, he'd have to go. Hmm. Cuz the, the 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 balance needs to be is Raj de utte dharm da kunda chahida. Dharam needs to be above the Raj, yep. not Raj above the Dharam. And in, right at the moment, the the Punjab, the, the Punjab government has influence over SGPC. So it's not like the Akal Takht is submitted. It's, it is actually submitted to the government. The government mm-hmm. doesn't submit to the the, the Akal Takht. If Akal Takht say, say something, it doesn't mean that it's going to be followed. Yeah. And that's the difference. And when you talk about Khal Saraj, and I think in that is is very important that we understand that. Look. you as a human right forget everything else as a human right you have the right to self determine self determination is a human right mm. every country made on this planet became came from a hope that we want to be independent yep. it didn't just come because you know they didn't think about it because they're not allowed to think about it mm. which you know where the one of the biggest nations on this planet without a home mm. and we bring so much to the world imagine if that had a home mm. yeah as in in that in itself i think it's very important that the average sikh doesn't shy away from saying khalsa raj or khalistan mm. or saying them things because we should normalize that yeah the word in itself is your right but we've it's been uh, basically made into like a word that we should we scared of and, saying and we're so happy to fight for other people's rights yeah. when it comes to our own why don't we stand up Absolutely. maybe it's like interrogation let me give you a prime example the uk government said you can go fight in ukraine mm. Why? Because they look at the story of Ukraine. It was a part of Russia. It broke away. Yeah, and now it is fighting for its independence again. It might, was, would they do the same if it was Punjab? No. <laughs> they wouldn't, would they? <laughs> but why? Because the, the programming is happening that that's wrong to fight for that one, yeah. but it's right to fight for that one. But yeah. if you look at it morally, they're absolutely the same thing. Mm-hmm. You, I think I think on a, even like a state level, we've we've been indoctrinated, or like there's been in, like for generations propaganda that we shouldn't think this way. Absolutely. But actually, Guru Nanak Dev Ji taught us to think this way. Yeah. And did. that's what the threat was for all of these people. Yeah, yeah. I think and I think that is in itself one of the key. aspects of why we're not where we are because we have that fear of saying mm. oh anak and you can't go to a certain place or you can't go here you can't go there mm. it's it, it's not like that i think the fear is something that we need to start now breaking away from and saying that look we should be able to talk about our rights and if you're not able to talk about your rights then where's your jameer in it like as in mm. every person should have the right to talk about their rights yeah and we've talked a lot about punjab saving punjab I've all about actually going to Punjab as an individual. I said we did just go to Pakistan, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been to Pakistan, the Punjab. Punjab side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Char da lenda Punjab da Punjab bhai sir. This is actually a really good point. You know, like if someone says to you, "Are you Indian?" What do you guys normally say? It's like, "Yeah, I'm Indian." Mm. We should shy away from saying that. Yeah. We're Punjabi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. If someone asks you what are you, you say I'm Punjabi. Mm. And that is equally just as much Pakistan Punjab is ours than it is India Punjab. Yeah. We've got more historical places in Pakistan Punjab than we have in India. Mm. Where Guru Ram Das Ji's Janmastan is, where Guru Arjan Dev Ji Shahid Ji is, mm. where Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Janmastan is. Mm. Like so much, so much dense, rich history in Pakistan. Over 135 historical gurdwara there, more than we have in in the the other side of Punjab. Mm. But, but why well. haven't why haven't we owned that Punjab? Mm. Why haven't we said that that's our Punjab as well? Why don't we go there? Because with the, 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 you've been programmed to fear and think, okay, that side is not ours. This side's ours. Yeah. And but equally should be both ours. The 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 birthplace of your you know the founder of Sikhi was in Pakistan Punjab. Mm. So why shouldn't we be openly going there and saying, look, this is we want to go see the Guru Kars and mm. Darshan of our, our uh, Guru Stans there as well. Mm. So it's really important that we, as the next generation diaspora, we are Punjabi, and that means. 
that Punjab is 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 our homeland. Mm. Don't say you know like all these people that um, <laughs> go on like you know they support certain cricket teams and then the, the fights happen and all these issues that have been happening. Yeah. The simple answer to that you don't have to get involved in that issue because you're Punjabi. Yeah. 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 And Punjabi is in both sides, so you support both teams. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Just going off topic, Vasa. What was your favorite thing in Punjab in uh, Pakistan? The favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a it's an area where um, it's called it's, it's basically the condensed area in Lahore, where Pai Taru Singh was shaheed. Mm. The energy in that place is something that I can't explain in words. Right. It's something else. One one kind of uh, beautiful thing about Pakistan Punjab is they've preserved. They've not slapped marble over everything. Yeah. Mm. And you go if you go sit there, you feel the vibrations. The 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 area sing singing the Gurdwara. Where you know hundreds of thousands of Sikh Shaheed is still in that place, the Chakiyan, the Tote Tote Karake, Ganajahar Boy, that Gurdwara, the energy there, you feel like me talking about it right now, I, mm. my hair standing on its end, just thinking about that. Even space. the coup is there, as well, no? the coup that was filled with mm. bodies, yeah. So, it that in itself is it's something that every Sikh should see before they die. Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Janamastan is again something beyond words. Mm. The the uh, Tambu Sahib where Guru Sahib slept uh, under the tree um, Guru Sahib's uh, Patti Sahib where they went to school like all these are in walking distance with each other mm. and you you can imagine Guru Sahib in these galiya another place is Guru Ram Dasti's Janamastan mm. where Guru Sahib was you know actually on them streets selling what they used to as an orphan mm. and you know you, the, the Shabd comes to mind Ham Rul Te Fir Te Koi Baat Na Poochta and you know it, it, it kind of really helps you Imagine and understand and get back in touch with it at the ass is really important. Right. Mm. Cool. Any questions for me? Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, should we go for a quick fire round then? Because you got questions from the yeah, go on. And um, some of them, <laughs> this one, I don't know if they're being serious or not, but the question is, how do you plan on saving Punjab? <laughs> because it's called saving Punjab. <laughs> so I don't know if they're being serious or, yeah. but how do you, niche again, quick fire, how research. Do you plan? From the research, we have um, solutions, and then the solutions are then um, those organizations or people that are already doing stuff to kind of guide them to st strategize with them. And ultimately, if if nothing's happening like that, then we we open a, a, a local air and you know where a, every single person is investing in their bins that we would hopefully like to oversee. Uh, what sh this is already kind of me touched upon, but again, just uh, a quick fire. What should we be? What should be done about Christian conversions? Again, um, let's not focus on what they're doing. Let's focus on what we're doing, mm -hmm. and and seeing that you know everyone has a right to to follow whatever they want to follow. But if we, we've obviously got some problems within our own term um, on how we're doing prajar or where we're at, at the moment, and that's what we need to focus on and, and on our prajar and mm -hmm. and making people fall in love for Sikhi like we fell in love with Sikhi. Yeah, like there's obviously a gap somewhere on them understanding. We, we should show Sikhi rather than sell it. Absolutely. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. Mm. Um, how can you save Punjab sitting in diaspora? Yeah, I think uh, that's one that we get asked a lot, as in how are you going to do anything from sitting over here? Mm. And I think at the moment, we're not saying we're just going to save it from here. You know, we're at a very kind of, we've only been around for a year or two. We're at the very teething stages of what we're doing. We're, we're still kind of um, mm. building upon how we want to tackle this. And when we've got the strategies, the sustainable solutions in place, we're not going to carry the solutions out here. They're mm. going to be over there on the ground. Mm. So it's about getting to the average Punjabi Sikh person there and, and getting them to carry out. And it's exciting you said that, Faisal, because you've only been around for such a short time, but there's still so much you've done. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So there's so much potential, right? Yes. Uh, this is a good question. Western Sikhs going back to Punjab, how realistic is it? I, well, if it happened in the Israel... Mm. Why can't happen to Punjab? Mm. As in, wouldn't do you guys like going to Punjab? Love yep. it, love it. So why wouldn't you go and even if it doesn't mean that we go live there mm. forever, mm. but we have a space where we live there six months a year, and we invest back into our Punjab there. And just going off topic, even like at my sister's school, they like the Jews. They invest in sending kids from schools over to like the concentration camps, and so it's all so funded. And and then they go, they see it, and then they go back and teach the rest of the class. Yeah. Why are we not doing that for Punjab? Yeah, absolutely. We we need to be sending our youth mm -hmm. here to say, go experience Punjab, go yeah. feel Punjab live. Like I said, because there's a, there's a huge link between Punjab and Sikhi and understanding 
uh, if there's so many things that we wouldn't wouldn't understand unless you know the geographical area we understand that mm. so many examples that guru sahib gives in bani um for how many years does punjab have water reserves if you know that fact so punjab's water reserves in terms of I don't understand the, the ground water around. level. I'm so Punjab's yeah. groundwater, the, the whole topic in itself. So Punjab had um, five rivers: Jhelum, Janab, in this, in this being the kind of further left one, Bias, Satluj, and Ravi, as being Punjab's five rivers. When the Indus Water Treaty happened in 1966, two rivers were left in Pakistan, being uh, sorry, 1947 when India was partitioned. So Jhelum and Janab was left in Pakistan. Mm. Ravi kind of comes in and out of Pakistan. <coughs> Punjab's then waters, so the Punjab Satluj, Bias, and Ravi were um, kind of because Haryana and Himachal were broken away. The dams was kind of stopped Punjab's water outside of Punjab, the Pakhra Dam, and seventy five percent of Punjab's water at the moment is being diverted. So I think it's seventeen point one seven million acre feet of water that is naturally allocated to Punjab annually. And out of that, Punjab is only getting twenty four point five percent of it. Wow. Um, it's kind of touched upon this earlier. Is Khalistan a solution to all the problems? Like I said again, I'll go through it again. If you had you, if you had in control of your borders, would Nasha come in? Mm. Mm. If you had control of your borders, would uh, language be an issue? Would uh, be be an issue? Would all these things like? I think the the problem is the central government is in charge of Punjab, directly, indirectly, and it doesn't have an invested interest for Punjab. It cares about one thing, and that's the economy. Mm. And if if what we care about is the heritage, the language, uh, and kind of the seventy five percent of our qom living there. So ultimately, if you had your own homeland, then you would invest more in that. And sorry, just to touch on that more uh, macro level, yeah, all the. Politics and the laws, right? But on a micro level, each individual should live up to the Khalsa Rath, right, and to the Khalsa Divni, and then they can Im- increase their area of influence, right? And just by doing that, the individual can make a big difference. Sikh is walking, talking Khalsa Raj. Yeah. Where a Sikh stands is oh. Khalsa Raj. Mm-hmm. That's what Guru Sahib he, he gave us that philosophy because for us, it's not about you know uh, we, when we say Raj. You know, Mara says in Qurbani, he says, Raj na chahu, mukta na chahu, man preet charan ko malare. Mm. So we don't want Raj for ourselves. We want Nanak Raj. Mm. Nanak Raj is the the kind of such and the kind of the prevailing of the truth. So when we fight for that Raj, Mara says, what's the jag in front of us? Man jeet hai. It's nothing to us, isn't it? The world is nothing to us. But we just want the taram to flourish. And for that, you need the Raj. Yeah. Mm. So... When we talk about Khalsa Raj, we're talking about such and such being throughout the whole world. Mm. And uh, a final question from uh, the Sangat is, what are the solutions to the issues you create awareness about? Again, we've I think we've touched upon yeah. a lot of the, the solutions. The solution for, for me, the final message is get back into touch with Punjab. Mm. As in your own parents, know your parents, know you know what the issues are know what the solutions could be to the issues any questions you guys reach out to us any time any place you know if you want us to create we do talks on awareness on punjab's issues uh, camps or um seek societies wherever you want we'll come and deliver a kind of crash course on what's going on in punjab at the moment mm. but ultimately we are not going to save punjab as an organization we're going to save it as the next generation of punjabis and sikh mm. and invest in back in punjab so unless you start doing that now doing your own research seeing what you know helping us with research doing your own mm. and i think that's really important that we start understanding okay the actual scale of the issue how deep the issue goes what we potentially could do to kind of um, you know cuz i you guys might have an issue, a solution that i might not even thought of mm. so we need to kind of uh, you know touch base think about have these think tank events where we sit down and think about solutions and strategies mm. um but ultimately to save punjab everyone needs to start doing their effort there's 12000 pins in punjab and i'm sure everyone sitting in the diaspora is probably from some pin or another mm. they just need to start investing back in mm-hmm. and if if we give the program of what these kind of things that we can do whether it's education or it's environmental or sustain just to start off on a small, small step that everyone starts doing these in their pins mm. and i think that's how the next generation needs to be in touch with punjab because mm. remember this is not home mm. 
So, uh, Baisab, just to like wrap up, maybe for, for someone who's listened to this podcast, what is like a few practical steps they can do? Where would you direct them? Firstly, understand the problem. Like I said, if if I'm going to London and I'm looking at a map, if I don't know where I am, how am I going to get to London? Understand where we're at at the moment. Awareness is key. So look at our social media pages. We're giving facts weekly, daily. So shout out, Versus what is the... Saving Punjab. Yep. So uh, at Saving Punjab on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, um, our website, savingpunjab.org. So look at the kind of understanding the issue. Because if you understand, then you can take it forward. And I'm a candle. If I've lit two other candles today, we might like thousands of other candles. So awareness is key. Understanding... Sending that message on of this is what's going on with us at the moment. Because from that you get, and someone once said to me that, you know, a candle might, you might think it's small, but all it takes is one little flame to set a forest fire. No. So like a, a, by color, I used to say in it, mm. Punjabi, Kadiba, Kadiniya, yeah, that, that, be that light that challenges that darkness as such. Mm. So create the awareness, pass the message on uh, is the kind of key step at the moment. Understand the issue. You know, do your own research. Don't just take our word for it. Yeah. And let's now start looking as the next generation of how we can better Punjab. Because mm. we're going to do it. The older generation came here. They did what they have to do for survival. And, you know, no disregard to them. They did it so that we could now survive. And now we're in a position now where we can give back to Punjab. Mm. So let's do it. Whether it's uh, through the environmental issues, the social issues or religious like basics to Sikhi, you know, and other organizations out there that want to do Parjar, let's do something for Punjab. Yep. Uh, Baisa, it's been great having you on. You've been, been, been great being here. Thank you. Been a great guest. You know, all the talking, <laughs> you just have to listen, soaking so much. It's made our jobs much easier as well. Thank you. So, thank you so much. I know we spoke earlier as well about. I mean, off before the podcast about doing things in future together, any other, um, you know, types of talks or specific podcasts. If anybody who's listening to this podcast wants to know more, uh, maybe wants by up to do something specific, like a specific series on something um, specific we talked about today, then please let us know. Uh, any final questions or anything that you want to share? No, um, just thank you. Up? Thank you for guys for having me. Uh, and apologies if I said something that was wrong. Uh, but that's about it. Thank you so much. Why would you get